Well, you've seen the red we did over the chimney, um, on the chimney breast and the sh where the shelves are and the logs. Um, now we're agonising over which colour to choose for the walls. Um, I've still got some of this chicken fabric left. Um, and we, these are the colours we like, but we can't decide which one to do on the walls. Uh, we don't want it to look too dark, really. Um, so these are the colours we like. Um, we painted some of the furniture and cupboards in this parchment colour. Um, and we want it to look light and bright. That's possibly too dark anyway. And to go with the curtains. And I've got enough of this left to make a Roman blind on the window here, which I'll show you later. So we've definitely narrowed it down to these colours. Hopefully you can see them. Um, so tell us what you think, because we want it to complement this. We don't want white or grey. Number one at the top, working your way down if you want to make a comment. Let us know what you think. So this is where I propose to put the Roman blind, fix it here. I'll put a thin strip of Velcro on here and screw in some eyelets underneath so I can pull it up. Because um, the problem is with all French windows, or most of them, they open inwards. So I can't actually fix anything to the top of the window here because I wouldn't be able to open them. Um, it's just to keep the heat in in the winter at night time but also when it's sunny and you're sitting at the table it's quite hot get can get quite hot so that's the plan right i've brought you over to the corner of the kitchen um this is where the water comes into the house this is the mains water and we've got all these various pipes and valves or whatever i've got quite a major re-piping to do in this house because um some of the connections uh, I'm not happy with really and we did have one fail on us uh, we had to sort it out very quickly one day so the plan is really to take the pipework to the corner and up and then up into the attic and then it can be distributed around the house from there and it gets rid of the need for all this other pipework um, one job I've got to do is get rid of this old pump. It doesn't work. It's been disconnected from the electrics now, but it didn't work anyway, apparently. Um, and basically that brought uh, the water in from the well into the house. But of course, we've now got mains water. So it came in this way and then was distributed up into the house. Um, it may be that we can get it working at some point, but at the moment it's not needed here. Um, but I'm not going to tamper with these pipes just yet. I'm not quite ready to do that. And um, part of that, part of this exercise will be um, when we reconfigure the bathroom um, taps and things like that. So that's the time when I'm going to actually do it. But one job I can do today is dismantle this box where the electric um, for the pump was. The electrician disconnected it last time he was here, Michael. Um, so all I've got to do is take this box off, I'll take it off from the pump as well and then I can repair these holes. I probably won't repair them today because I've got plenty of little filling in jobs to do. So next time I mix some filler I'll, I'll come and repair this but I might as well get rid of this. It's been annoying us sitting on the wall, it's totally unnecessary now. So that's what I'm going to do. If in doubt, just yank it off the wall. <laughs> These screws are so tight and they're a bit corroded, so easiest thing to do, just grab it and pull it 
and hope for the best. In theory, if I really wanted to, I could just undo this because it's got a valve on here, take this pipe off, undo it here because at the end of the day, uh, that pipe there is coming from the well. Without a pump, there's no water going to come into the house and I could block this off anyway. I just don't want to disturb anything if I don't need to at this stage. Um, and I'm, you know, there's always danger that that might leak and then I've got a problem. So I'm going to leave this for now. These concrete blocks it's sitting on will have to come off as well at some point. And then we can do something with this corner. We'll probably have a cupboard in here, uh, which will hide the mains, etc. Hello, boy. Um, but it's just preparing now. That's all I'm trying to do now is prepare so I can fill these holes and then we'll worry about this as and when. Ah, welcome back. Right, in the last episode, you saw Susie had uh, collected all our green tomatoes up. They're not going to ripen up. Um, I could ripen it up in the house, but I'm not going to. There's one or two things we can do with green tomatoes. And one of the things is a little tomato salsa. Uh, we've got some chilli left over from the other day, so it seems a sensible thing to do to make a little salsa. And that's what I'm going to do now. Sabroso! Cha-cha-cha! Sabroso, señoras y señores. Este es un baile que se llama cha-cha-cha.
I talked about um, some of my decorations on Sunday and the special meanings some of them have and I just wanted to show you a couple more. This was from some elderly friends. We have, um, they're no longer with us but I always keep the boxes for these things that's why it takes up so much space. Um, and it's a snow globe and every time I see it I always think of them so that's really sweet I'll leave that one. And they used to love our other cavaliers. We used to take them round, well I did primarily, to see them. And they were kind of like what they call pet dogs, where you take them to see old people because they can't have pets in their warden flats or homes. So it used to make their day when I took the dogs around there and the dogs liked it because they got loads of biscuits and things <laughs> and treats. Um, and this is from our neighbours in the UK. Um, again, this place to Anne and Mick. And over the years they've bought us quite a few bits. They bought us this when our old Charlie died. The owl, hedgehogs, and various other bits. So I always think of them when I get the Christmas decorations out. Enchanté.